so this video is going to show you how to produce a nice quality model uh, for your final A level piece. It's actually a two part video so this first part is all about uh, taking a nice solid works model and interpreting how to make it, planning how to make it. Part two will be making it. So as you can see here in front of us we've got a CAD model of the drill, um, the workshop drill. It's a uh, pretty straightforward model using the uh, techniques you'll have done in your CAD course. One or two features, well just one function that you might not have come across before which is wrap which I've used to just cut these indents in um, on the side. Uh, apart from that it uses all the normal functions. It's not particularly accurate for those of you who might want to be fussy about drill positions. Just the overall size is more or less the same but um, anyway for the purposes of this video it should be fine. Now I need to interpret how to make this, so um, basically we're not going to be doing much in the way of traditional hand modelling, uh, we're going to interpret how to use the uh, various forms of rapid prototyping, in our case the CNC routers and the 3D printer. One or two little bits are going to be laser cut and laser etched to get the text and what have you. Um, but the main body of it is going to be made out of MDF. So. Um, let's start with the body of the drill. So we've got this clutch, we've got uh, kind of joining bit here, we've got the chuck, we've got the jaws here. Um, all the way down here, I've decided it's just quick and easy. You get the detail just to 3D print it. It leans itself well to 3D printing. Diameter's not too massive. There's no major overhangs to worry about. Um, we can split it up into various parts and just print them bit by bit, especially uh, separated out in colours, so you can, print, uh, can spray them separately and assemble them. Um, then the main body of the drill is going to be largely CNC routed. Um, the CNC router will have a much larger footprint than the 3D printers, so this body is actually a little bit too big for the 3D printers. It'll also just make a slightly more um, weighty, strong object in MDF. Um, but the downside is MDF itself, well, to be honest, both MDF and the 3D printed parts finish aren't great. And you need to do a little bit of preparation to, to get it looking really like a, a drill. Um, so part two will run through methods of painting and filling just to get priming, just to get the drill right. So. Um, I've also decided, uh, just by the way this drill is designed, it leans itself quite nicely to, rather than masking off these black and yellow parts, um, print them or rather um, fabricate them separately. So when you're choosing to um, uh, CNC route, you've really got to think about uh, no overhangs. So if I look at half, I mean it's moulded, split line is banged down the middle all the way around apart from the base and the battery. Sorry, even the base of uh, battery. All of this, just two halves. So I can just create all the parts to uh, one side and then mirror them. Um, but also, I realised actually I can just route out this black bit as one part, this black bit as one part, and then the yellow bit I'm going to route out two parts stacked. So this bit is a bit too high um, to route as one. The max height on the router is 25 mil. Um, this is about 51 mil, I think, from there to there. So actually, I might have to think about maybe just shrinking that a millimeter. Um, to be honest, this bit here, you're not going to notice if I sh if we call this the z-axis, if it's looking top down, um, keeping the scale of the x and y the same, just uh, reducing it by one millimeter shouldn't be noticeable. Um, on this. It might be a bit more noticeable than this because we've got a circle here which marries up to this circular chuck clutch. Um, so something to bear in mind there. Do make your life easier if it means just you know doing three parts because I'm one millimeter over the maximum height that we can do on the router. Ask yourself do I really need that millimeter? No, probably not on this model. So we'll just kind of scale that down at one millimeter. Um, so I'm going to need to work out how to split it all up. Oh, and also, obviously, the router is limited by um, its detail of the cutting bit. So normally we use quarter-inch bits, uh, which means any 
internal corner like this is going to have a radius on it because the the bit is round and it's six and a half mil 6.35 mil uh, diameter so these kind of radii can't be less than three and a bit mil um, so I've actually designed this and realized that these are all over six mil so that should be okay but obviously these little detail bits is not going to really be picked up very well with the router um, I'm going to do some experimentation and route this out of plastic which is a much uh, better material for um, quality surfaces finish than the than the MDF but even so I know that these internal corners even with a three mil bit just not going to have it. a definition of this little hammer logo um, isn't going to work so I'm going to try it but likelihood is I'm not going to use it I'm going to um, use 3d printed parts so I'm going to have to cut an insert in here now being two and a half D um, it's never going to be able to model all this underside here I don't even this just happened to um, happen to shell it when doing the model but actually it's not necessary for the model but if you imagine if we convert this model into a file that the CNC router will use a G file or an SDL um, <coughs> or export it from an SDL from SolidWorks turn it into a G file it's going to ignore all these hollow cave internal things um, so you'll see when we output it from uh, into uh, GeoCam the router program you'll notice that the the under undersides all these internal bits are ignored and you just get a solid lump um also little details like this it's a good idea to plan how we could do it but i've decided just for the sake of this model I'm not going to uh, bother doing these um just so you know i would have drilled into the um mdf drilled out a hollow filed it and then inserted the yellow bit from behind but i just decided for the purposes of this model it's just just too much detail to worry about um okay so let's begin right here's one i got earlier so basically i have used cut um so in other words i've s used something called cut extrude drawn out a sketch and just removed all of this um from the model so just cut it out, got rid of the chuck. I'm only interested in this bit. It's kind of messed up the colouring, but I only just put that just for, for visual purposes. Um, but I need to be able to now separate these out into the three parts. So the two black parts here, and then this, this yellow part. Now, this sketch, if we can find it, uh, this one here, sorry, is what I started off with. So obviously this is the first yellow body part. Um, which is two parts because this bit is just a little bit more um, I've just traced around the uh, wrap function with a, uh, a line cut all of that out and then cut all of that out and I'm left with this okay so this is almost what I want um, I then want to go into that plane and I'm just going to slice off that now as it happens this actually was over 25 mil so it's just sliced this off in the same plane so this whole thing is now 25 mil now it looks like a bit of a kind of spindly little kind of unprintable unmanufacturable kind of part but remember the cnc router is only going to look at the top surface so all this underhang undercut is going to ignore anyway so theoretically i should just end up with this surface profile so we'll kind of route out this bit, route out all these bits, consider that, that curve, etc., etc. Um, so this is actually good as it stands to print. I might want to think a little bit about, um, obviously it's kind of sliced off all this. I might want to just kind of cut out a bit more. So next function, I let's see, this one here. I filled that in and then I cut it out again, a bit lower. Now it's worth saving, obviously be very careful when you've got one model part, just save it out as something different before messing it up like this. But the advantage rather than removing functions, um, of just cutting off functions like that, the, you're almost masking them off, um, but they're still there so you can still go back and use it. Now when I come to kind of extracting these detail bits, I've got this cutting plane that's 25mm um, off the center plane like that 
I've got this outline and rather than kind of cutting what's that inside of it I'm going to cut what's outside of it so I'm just going to modify the cut and then I'm left with the opposite uh, and that way it all fits together really nicely even on two different types of device hopefully if they're set up correctly so um, once you've got all these bits extracted so this is the one bit I'm going to do uh, I'm going to go file save as STL like that uh, and then save it and then go back and take the other bit so for example when we've let's go back to we've done this cut extrude uh, I want to just get the other part so I'm going to go into edit sketch okay so I've cut off all that top bit uh, sorry I'm looking the wrong plane that bit there all I need to do is just swap it around like that exit sketch uh, and so there's a little issue there um, somehow I've kind of managed to get this this probably just poor modeling rushing it but yeah assuming that wasn't broken like that um, I would have this bit just by swapping the cutting plane to the other side so then I'd just save this bit out as an STL uh, pull apart all those things so hopefully it's a very quick uh, low down on how to extract bits for model um, <coughs> And then from there, we just save out a load of STLs. Now, believe it or not, um, Slicer, which is a program that you're all familiar with, the 3D printer, um, you can actually use it as well to lay out STLs together. So rather than, <coughs> um, let's just get that, wait for it rather than uh, taking all these parts separately and routing them all out especially when they're quite kind of skinny parts with lots of gap between them so let's say I've got the black part like that I'm going to just rotate that in the y-axis okay now that is let's just make this big that is uh, both parts obviously you know I deleted out all of it or I masked out all of the other bit of drill and I've just got these bits here um, this is a little bit less than six mil so I can't leave it as is I've got to kind of make this gap a bit bigger for the router bit to to get out so you can do that in um, in slicer just go split and it will take it out into three parts I don't know why there's a third part there. it's an invisible part like that but I can just delete that here um, I'll then bring in the yellow part one yellow part one um, <coughs> rotate that y-axis 90 and the yellow part two rotate 90 now, one thing I've noticed sometimes um, with Slicer, it's a bit annoying, but you've got this bit highlighted. I'll move it around, that's fine. I wanna move this, it's fine. Yeah, okay, typically it's working fine when I'm demonstrating it. Uh, but I find if you add more parts, let's just add the black part again, but reverse it. So, say X axis. Sorry, not X, Y. Uh, and then flip it. Now, weirdly, it's just working fine, typically. Um, split, sorry. I've never seen it work nicely but yeah you might find that you're trying to select that and you move you go to, it's selected in green and you go to move it and something else moves uh, it's a really annoying bug which annoyingly seems not to be working when I'm showing you how to do it but just so you know if that does happen it's best to go in 2d now as you can see um, it's actually showing the whole footprint so this is actually kind of an overall graphic so it limits what you see also um, you can't zoom out because it just shows the bed size so here this is the Mendel the old old 3d printer um, it's going way bigger than the bed 
you can actually fix that um, if you go load config bundle normal place so uh, student share CAD slicer profiles and Boxford CNC bed size that is the size of the whole CNC bed um, that way you should then be able to use the 2d preview and if you do have a problem with not being able to select a bit then just use this 2d thing and it will work fine so you can lay it all out like that a bit easier now I'm looking for something that is a little bit more space saving than it was um, ideally we might want to go uh, a bit more compact but obviously careful not to leave any gaps less than six and a half mil or something like that um, 30 I'm not very good at talking and thinking what I'm doing so oh, wrong way it's a 300 so I'm just going to kind of adjust stuff to just be a little bit more space saving I might want to kind of think about one of those etc anyway this is just uh, just to show you to lay out um, I'm probably going to end up just having one of these parts so yeah then when you've got it all laid out ready to cut on the CNC router we just export STL and it will just save a new STL with all of those bits combined in laid out ready for CNC routing um, so that's that uh, obviously if you're going to bring in um, 